Welp, it's a Thanksgiving Day miracle. The Washington football team are currently leading the NFC East. Finally, the race to who is going to win their fourth game first. Uh, it's the Washington football team. Incredible. Let's talk about all the things that went right for them. First, let's talk about some trickery. You know, we saw a lot of trick plays, some good, some bad in both of these games. Uh, for Washington, what they're going to do is they're going to basically have a tight end handoff where the tight end is then going to throw the ball. I like this play a lot. Uh, I think these things can definitely work out if you have a tight end who can throw the ball, which they clearly do. Basically, the way this play works is that it's a cover three zone, and they have a concept that is good against this coverage when you run play action. And that's essentially what this is, is this is just taking play action to another level where you have Terry McLaurin running over the middle, and with this, again, not just play action, but an actual flip back to Logan Thomas, it's really going to fool the linebackers into thinking it's going to be a running play, so they are going to move a lot further in, and, you know, uh, sometimes guys like Kirk Cousins or Ryan Tannehill get some blame for saying they're only uh, play action quarterbacks. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than that, but getting linebackers out of position can make things really easy on whoever you have throwing the football. So as you see, Smith fakes the handoff, flips it back to Thomas, and now this is the point where Thomas is getting ready to throw the football, and you look at how many Dallas players are in the area still expecting uh, a running play because, again, why wouldn't you here? And you see he's well behind the line of scrimmage, so you might be thinking, hey, we could get a big loss. We could make him lose like five here. That would be a huge swing in our direction. However, the opposite happens. Look at Thomas. He throws one downfield. Uh, McLaurin got open, and he got open because, again, because of the play action, there were no linebackers in the area. All he had to do was get underneath the defensive backs, and he was able to do that. Of course, I can't see the whole play, but I'm assuming there is good route running just because it's McLaurin, uh, and he was able to use his good route running to, you know, get fool the defensive backs deep, and he knew he didn't have to fool anybody underneath since they would be trying to stop a run that wasn't coming. Let's talk about McLaurin for a second. Uh, this one's a great example. It's just a quick man coverage. It's a cover one blitz play. So basically the entire middle of the field is taken away and, you know, it's completely cleared. The only people in the area will be Dallas players who are covering other Washington players. And since McLaurin is running a quick route, it's going to get over the middle a little bit. Uh, and he has so much space since he's the only receiver up there. This is a great situation for McLaurin. Watch this first step. Watch how he takes a step. And already you've seen that that Dallas corner is a little bit committed in that direction. Notice the Dallas corner and how his hips are turned towards the top of the screen, towards the sideline. That's all McLaurin needs. He just needs that one step. He can beat you with that. And especially with the space, it's going to be really easy for him to. As you see, he gets over the middle, gets wide open, makes the catch. Again, is that the biggest highlight reel level play you'll ever see? No, but he can do that consistently. And he's proven that, you know, uh, it's kind of become a running joke on my podcast about how we sort of talk about every fan base thinks their number one receiver is underrated. Well, it's actually true for the Washington football team's fans. He is underrated. He's clearly a true number one guy. Just an incredible player. I know a lot of people are going to want to hear, well, what did Dallas do wrong? Because let's be honest, people love hearing that stuff. So I'll talk about both. I'll talk about what they did wrong and also how Washington took advantage of their mistakes because usually, you know, there's two sides of the same coin. I'm not sure if I use that expression properly, but nevertheless, let's move on. Like, let's take a look at this play. So, you know, it's pretty much over at this point. Dallas has two timeouts. There's three minutes and 40 seconds left, and it's 11. It's an 11 point game. So, really, Dallas needs a stop right here. They can force Washington to take a long field goal. Even if they get it, it's a two score game. You have three minutes left and two timeouts. You need a miracle, but. It wouldn't be the craziest comeback we've ever seen. It certainly wouldn't be the craziest comeback Dallas had had this season uh, if they're able to get it. So, uh, you know, it's possible. For Washington, they have a really a very basic concept. One notable thing, though, is they have a straight-up double team here with their left guard and also their left tackle. They're going to be double teaming an interior defensive lineman. They're leaving the edge rusher on the bottom of the screen completely unblocked. And really what's key and why there is a Dallas mistake here is simply with the fact that Dallas, A, they have Jalen Smith, their linebacker, playing on the line. So he's blitzing on this play. They're playing man coverage. They're not expecting a run here because it's third and six, which I do understand. But Washington is taking advantage of this perfectly. Watch how once this ball is snapped, 
Really, I mean, you, you see the, the ball is in the halfback's hands, but look at the hole he can run through. This is just too easy of a hole for him to run through. I mean, this is wide open, and he's already basically guaranteed the first down right here. Maybe there can be a great play, and a couple of Dallas players are going to try and make a great play. Gibson moves up past the line of scrimmage. You see Smith is diving, and also look at the safety. It looks like for a second he thought maybe he could crash in and potentially get a tackle before uh, Gibson even got to the first down marker. Honestly, that, that was just never going to happen, but he's trying to make a play. It's desperation time, and Gibson, again, he's taking advantage of it because he has the speed to take advantage of it. As you see, he blows right by him, gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Good play from Gibson for sure, absolutely. You could argue it's a mistake from Dallas, but I get why they did everything they did. I'm not going to kill them for, for that. Let's talk about some other mistakes they did. And also, I like how typically I try not to talk too much about the other team when I make a video centered on the winning team. But uh, I think for Washington football team fans, they're probably just as happy to hear me talk negative about the Cowboys than talk positive about their team. How about this one? This was the defensive touchdown. Again, crazy to think Washington scored 40 points in this game. Uh, but Part of it was because they just got a few big plays late when Dallas was in desperation mode. This one, not so much, though. So uh, it's interesting how it's going to work. It's going to be a blitz here. So you have, uh, you know, a linebacker, also a defensive back are going to blitz here. So they're applying pressure. They're definitely, again, for Washington, they're saying, hey, why let up now? It's actually only a five-man rush. You're going to have Chase Young on the other side of the screen actually drop back into coverage. So a little interesting move there. But, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary for a football team. Well, you might be wondering, who cares? It was Montez Sweat who got the turnover and got the touchdown. So what does it matter uh, about the blitzing guys? And it matters a lot because watch what the tackle, the right tackle, is going to do on this play. He allows Sweat to just run right by him to try to take up a blitzer, which you can do. Like, some teams do this. Personally, I don't like it. I'd rather just have the tackle take away the, the edge rusher basically always and just have the, you know, the back go to try to pick up the blitz. Uh, that's not what he did here, so he's going to try to uh, take away the middle of the field. The problem is that with Ezekiel uh, Elliott running out to the flat, he's not picking up this blitz. I wonder if this was just a design quick throw to the, uh, the flat, and that's why this happened. But if it was, the tackle has to block sweat there as opposed to taking away the middle of the field. So this makes no sense whatsoever, and it's just a bad idea. Sweat is able to leap up and manages to get the interception. A little lucky, but also uh, just a... A great play by him and bad play by Dallas. They they need to know what they're doing better. They need to be on the same page more. That's just a fact. Also, all-time blunder by Fox uh, putting in the graphic that says Dallas Cowboys touchdown uh, there. You know, it happens. But I, I for whatever reason, I find it so funny when that happens. When they change the scoreboard the wrong way, it's not that big of a deal. But this giant graphic saying Dallas Cowboys touchdown when it's not a Dallas Cowboys touchdown when Washington football team's players are celebrating... It just cracks me up every time. Okay, final play we'll talk about. How about the fake punt? Why not? Because, again, listen, I'm going to be completely honest. I am not a special teams expert in the slightest. I mean, I'm not really a football expert. I just watch a lot of football. Uh, so, But anyways, uh, especially when it comes to special teams. However, there definitely is some interesting things to talk about when we're talking about this play. A Dallas player is going to take the snap, not the punter. He's going to run to the top of the screen. He's going to flip it back to a gunner who's going to run back towards the middle of the field. Then on the bottom of the screen, the gunner on the bottom of the screen, he's going to run deep. And then you're going to have actually the punter. He's going to sort of run underneath. It looks like this is a design play to throw it to the punter, which, again, that part seems a little silly. But there is logic here, right? You throw it to the punter because no one else is going to be in that area. And, you know, I can catch a football. You watching this can catch a football. Anyone can catch a football. So I'm sure a professional athlete can as well. And, yes, punters are athletes. So... Uh, there's logic here, and just looking at it on paper, it seems like he should be the only person in that area. The problem with this play isn't actually the play concept itself. The play concept is fine. The problem with this play is that they like to run fake punts, and they have uh, John Fossil as their special teams coordinator, so they know a punt might, a fake punt might be coming. And so Washington, they're prepared for this. Watch out once this ball is snapped. They basically just drop back into coverage. I mean, it almost looks like they're playing like a, a cover uh, three zone here, just with no one deep, obviously. They, they drop back into coverage pretty well. The one sort of slip up is that you see the Dallas player I've circled in yellow. He's the gunner. He's completely open here because the player who was, you know, 
on him. He lets him go saying, okay, well, this is a fake punt. I got to make sure I'm taking away this area because oftentimes that's where fake punts try to attack. I got to try and take away this area because oftentimes that's where fake punts try to attack. So there is going to actually be a Dallas player wide open. The problem is the gunner just isn't going to pick this up. Watch how he keeps running and literally the the, the Dallas player downfield is ra raising his hand saying, I'm open. You can throw it to me. I do believe this was the designed pass uh, and instead he just runs straight into nobody because again, uh, all things broke down. You can't expect uh any line to block for that long, especially not a line that literally, typically the expect the expectation is guys are, there's more guys rushing the pass, you know, not rushing the pass here, but rushing the, to the ball. So this was kind of a screw up, but you also got to give credit to Washington because the fact that uh, the player who's covering the gunner on the bottom of the screen passed off a Dallas player and then took away that area, the punter wasn't open and he basically had no opportunity to try and make a play. So, uh, you know, it was a good play by Washington. You're forcing a gunner to now have to try and read the defense, which is just a difficult thing for someone who that's not their job. So I'm not going to kill him. It was good special teams by Washington. Let's give them some credit. They played well and they have four wins. No one else in the NFC East can say that. So pretty impressive. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, Thanks for watching and happy Thanksgiving.